We are back in the great state of Minnesota. This is the third time we've been here, so we know this state is rife with Bigfoot encounters. And in fact, during our last expedition, we heard a loud wood knock that I know was from a Squatch. Yes. Okay, did you guys do a wood knock? No, but Clips, I heard one. Bitchin'. Since then, we've been wanting to come back. Well, we finally got our reason to return. A little town called Reamer has declared itself the home of Bigfoot. That's a bold statement to make, so we had to come and investigate for ourselves. And as it turns out, Reamer isn't very far away from where we got action last time. So maybe there is something to these claims. Howdy. Hey, how are you? Welcome to Reamer. Thank you. Back to Minnesota. Mark Ruyak. We know Abe and who's that? Mike. Hey, Mike. All right. You guys seem to be confused what a Bigfoot is. This is an eagle. <laughs> it's Bigfoot's chicken, we like to uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. I understand that the brainchild of this whole Reamer is the home of Bigfoot thing is your idea? Yes. No, how did that come about? Because Minnesota doesn't exactly jump to the front of everyone else's mind when one thinks about Bigfoot. Right, so growing up, I heard a lot of stories about Bigfoot, and I started reading some of the history of Reamer, uh, the founder of Reamer, William P. Reamer, back in 1904. According to history, the founder did find tracks that he couldn't explain, large tracks. All right. So I guess it was this history that kind of prompted you to take action now. How did that yes. come about? Well, it, I started to put the pieces together and started to think, you know, there's so many stories out there and people are afraid to come tell them because there's a negative stigma attached to a sighting or an experience. And we have a huge day planned here in Reamer tomorrow. We've got our Bigfoot barbecue day because we want to open our arms and hey, come tell us your story. When you guys said the home of Bigfoot, I was like, these guys are not the home of Bigfoot. I gotta go straighten these guys out. But what you're saying is it's kind of a home in the sense that if you're in a Bigfoot, come here. Come here. We want to be the hub of Bigfoot. Absolutely. If somebody from the town were to have a sighting, how would they know where to report it? Because we've done a lot of work in the two events we've had, a lot of people are getting to know Abe and his team, so everybody knows who to call and who to contact. And you guys are the guys people are telling mostly, right? You got that right, Bo. I mean, we've been doing this for 16 years here in Minnesota. There's a lot of stuff that's happening around the Reamer area. Reamer has everything that Bigfoot needs, food, water, and shelter. And there's a lot of swamp, Cedar Swamp and Tamarack Swamp around this area as well. Are you experiencing a lot more people coming forward because of that declaration? Yes, absolutely. Just as a couple days ago, there was a guy fishing. He seen this Bigfoot come out of the woods, in the water, like was waiting around looking for something. Prints were found and casts were made, and they will be here tomorrow at the Bigfoot oh, Festival. Oh, excellent. Yes. I'll bring my scale item. There we go. Are they all oh, here wow. for the Bigfoot Festival? They can't be all here just for Reamer. Oh, wow, this has got a little bit of size, Oh, too. look, balloons, lots of kids. This is a promising sign. There are hundreds of people lining the streets of this tiny little town. They're wearing Bigfoot t-shirts. They're walking around with Bigfoot food items. They're posing for pictures with Bigfoot statues and cutouts. This place is looking squatchy. Oh, look at that statue up there. That's a good looking one. Oh, wow. Check it out. I can't wait to get out there and talk to these people and hear the stories they have to share. Here we go! Tracy, nice this reads you. Yeah. Is this a big donut? Okay, that's a 13 incher right there. And it's a very good tasting Sasquatch, too. Mmm, delicious. You guys have a question. You guys keep in touch, okay? I heard one. Um, this was about probably five years ago. Okay. Yeah, there's just been too many sightings to say no. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's just... To write it off as nothing. Correct. You know? All throughout the day, people keep coming up to us to share their reports about their Bigfoot encounters. So we decide to gather these witnesses at the Reamer Fire Department for a town hall meeting. This way, we can hear their stories in more detail. This festival has been a blast, but now it's time to get down to business. About 50 yards in in the woods, a full-grown tree started shaking back and forth. And it started, you know, crashing the branches and trees around it. Heading to a friend's house, and I hear the noise behind me, and I turn, and I see a large, tall figure. Sunday, out in my deer stand, I get this smell. And the only way I can describe it is like an outhouse was walking upwind from me. All of a sudden, it puts out this scream, like, Rah! I could feel the vibration in the air, 
and it hit me. I can't believe the number of sightings we're hearing, and all from around this area. Reamer's declaration seems a little more promising now. So my name is Emily. Um, the sightings were in Bacchus, which is about 35 miles southwest of here. Me and my brother, we saw across the lake, something huge came running down the hill. It grabbed a deer and strangled it, and then it dragged it back up the hill. I hunt, so I, I drag deer through the woods, and it dragged it away like I can't. It didn't affect it at all. See, now you're killing me because you're holding a cast. And can Cliff walk up and grab that cast from you like I know he wants to do? Yep. And you could actually see the uh, five toes in it. That's a great one. You can tell it's uh, fresh, too. This was just casted yesterday. Yesterday? No. Yep. Still hasn't dried out yet. Yeah. So what led to the casting of this thing? A friend of mine he was out fishing in a canoe, and he seen this figure walking in the water. And he started getting scared because this thing wouldn't go away. So it held him there out in the water for hours. And then he called me the next day. So I casted a couple of tracks. One turned out pretty good. The other one was too wet, couldn't cast that one. I can't wait to see the exact spot where Don cast this footprint. But first, we're going to talk to Sam, the guy who saw the Bigfoot that left this print. This is where it happened. Look at that lake. A lot thicker cover than I originally had imagined. This is probably the biggest part of the woods in, in our area. You got like 20 miles of square wilderness, no civilization. Inaccessible swamps. OK, well, if this is the spot, I want to hear the story directly from you. What happened? What were you doing? What did you see? Tell us the whole deal. The plan was to come out and do some bass fishing in the lily pads right offshore here. And the fish were biting right away. And I was having a great time. So I cast it out again. And as I set the hook, my lure flipped through and went by me. And as I turned to look back, I caught something in the corner of my eye moving on the shoreline. And it kind of turned and faced me. It was definitely a big, white creature. I was very, very excited to get out here. And I actually, you know, videotaped. And, and, I, and I came upon some pretty good tracks. Oh, do you have it here? Yeah, I sure do. Can we take a look at it, please? Sure. If you want to just press play. I see some deer tracks and stuff down here. Oh. oh, there's a lot more water now. There's some big tracks right there. Let's see me. Holy <laughs> Somebody needs to get over here. Look at this, guys. There it is. There it Look is. at that. You see holes in that thing? I do, man. I'm freaked out, dude. And then to make it worse, there's that perfect print. And then five feet away, there's another one that got in the deep mud that ain't so clear. I guarantee you, I seen a Bigfoot last night. 